A very good morning and a warm welcome to our distinguished guests, parents and persons of the media to this morning's felicitation ceremony. We are honored to have with us Ms. Sabina Segal, Country Head, Leading Schools Corp USA. On the way is Mrs. Virginia Kothwal, Consul General of France in Kolkata. Also, Madame Tiffen Meron, Deputy Director of Alias Forces, Kolkata. And Madame Solvik Overseeder, Attaché for Cooperation in French Language. We are also honored to have with us Professor Shorindranath Bhattacharya, Trustee of Sri Aurobindo Institute of Culture, and Mr. Pratip Kaur, Trustee, Sri Aurobindo Institute of Culture. In fact, if I may add, it was Mrs. Segal's insistence that we hold this felicitation ceremony with all of you publicly. Our school rarely holds felicitation ceremonies, the last one being held in 2014 when we got the partnership with Desefrosse Pondicherry. We are blessed to be in the living presence of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. With us, in spite of us, our living deities, our guardian angels, are constantly guiding us, and we are in their direction. In the heart of the institution is our sanctum sanctuary, which houses Sri Aurobindo's relics and ensures his living presence and direction. All initiatives here, including the Arun Nursery and the Future Foundation School, are of Sri Aurobindo Institute of Culture. Arun Tagore, caretaker of the mother's house in Calcutta, wanted to start a nursery school. Mother named it Arun Nursery. It opened its doors on September 4, 1972, with a handful of teachers and students. Srimati Bharati Tattu was the founder headmistress. Srimati Shikha Guho expanded the footprints. Today, under the able guidance of Srimati Sumitra Mitter, Arun Nursery caters to 600 children and has on its roads over 30 teachers. Children of Arun Nursery refuse to leave this home of the mother. And so, Srimati Jaya Mitter created the high school. She strove tirelessly, reskilling herself in the process to build this home away from home. Sri Pragyat Kumar Bhattacharya, trustee of Sri Aurobindo Ashram, Pondicherry, and founder chairman, Sri Aurobindo Institute of Culture, who initiated her into the work of the mother, chose the name the Future Foundation School in 1984. The school attempts to open the way of the future to children who belong to the future. We can see in the picture Dr. Karan Singh, former Union Minister and Crown Prince of Kashmir, currently Chairman Oroville Foundation. It's also seen as Sri Pati Jaya Mitter, Sri Rathin Mitter, Sri Shaman Mukherjee, Sri Arun Goho, Sri Shonjai Kaur, and Sri Mati Lakshmi Kaur. We are very honored to share our accolades with you. And I first invite our head academics and systems, Ms. Shuchandra Laha, to take the stage. Good morning, everyone. The Future Foundation School, Kolkata, is ranked West Bengal's number two and Kolkata's number two co-educational day school in the Education World India School Rankings 2019-20. We have been consistently receiving this award for the last five years. The annual Education World India School Rankings 2019-20 survey is the world's and the country's largest and most comprehensive survey of top 1,000 primary and secondary schools in India. It presents the most detailed, 
in-depth and extensive leak tables of any school's evaluation survey worldwide. Education World India School Rankings, along with C4, the well-known Delhi-based market research and opinion polls agency, rate and rank the schools on 14 parameters of school education excellence, namely academic reputation, faculty competence, leadership quality, sports education, co-curricular, life skills, etc. The survey is based on opinions and perception study involving educationists, principals, school teachers, parents, senior students, general public, in addition to getting the data, the basic information from the school itself. Thank you. Thank you, Shuchandra ma'am. I now invite our Vice Principal, Krishna Koli ma'am, to please take the stage and enlighten us on a very prestigious article on Great Schools of India in the Forbes magazine. She will also enlighten us on the recently received Sankalp Award. Good morning and a warm welcome to all of you present here. Now this article on our school was published by Forbes in their July edition. So I'll just read out a few lines from there. It starts with a beautiful message from Principal Sir. He says, I heartily congratulate the outgoing students for their board results, which has proved for the nth year in a row that the school is committed to growth and improvement of the many rather than the linear excellence of a few. The school aims to continuously provide all that is necessary for holistic personality development of its students by creating an environment of meaningful education. The next section is about the school where it is mentioned, the school has stayed true to the exalting vision and unfailing determination of its founder principal, Mrs. Joy Meter, keeping pace with the changing world and the school that the school has made huge progress in terms of technology and infrastructure and introduced an online learning management system. Coming to the greatness quotient, values-based learning, children visit and pray at a shrine that houses Sri Aurobindo's relics. Sessions on meditation and special assemblies on virtues are conducted on a regular basis. Over the years, children and alumni have found here their second home. Regarding career counseling, it is mentioned, this is this endeavor powered by a tie-up with a nationally reputed organization seeks to expose students to different career opportunities and thereby allows them to discover a career path that is aligned with their natural flair and talents. The school follows a unique teaching learning methodology where experiential learning is both encouraged and practiced in an environment of openness, art, film, and book appreciation activities are conducted and educational field trips and excursions that cater to enhancing the skill development of the students as well as training them for their performance beyond schools. Co-scholastic activities are chosen with utmost care and consideration that expose their hidden talents, enhance their creative abilities, hone their aesthetic sensibilities and improve their physical fitness. The last part is about our um, alumnus, who is a famous singer and actor, Monali Thakur. She shares with us, my school days were the best days of my life. I find myself to be the luckiest person to have been a part of the Future Foundation School. I feel proud to say 
that my school has had the strongest impact on my life. We're coming to Sankal Awards. Sankal Education Awards was constituted by Lions Club International, David and Goliath, and FACES, that is Friends of Alumni of Colleges, Educational Institutes, and Schools. Their aim is to recognize and reward outstanding teaching and contributions from educational institutions in different categories. Now this award ceremony was organized on 1st of September 2019. Over 100 schools and colleges had applied for the awards. We had applied in the category, the school that looks beyond, for which we had to submit documents as per the criteria, which were the different opportunities and exposures given to students, measures that have been taken to address the emotional health of students, and the vision of the school, which is how we try to develop the children holistically by seamlessly blending the physical, mental, vital, spiritual, and psychic aspects of a human being. So you see how apt it is for our school to receive this award as we follow the principles of education laid down by Sri and the mother, ideas that are just dawning on present day educators. Therefore this award is a recognition of how the school attempts to open the way of the future to children who belong to the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. It is now time for us to share our NABIT accreditation with you. And I invite Head Programs and Initiatives, Sharmila ma'am, to please come and take the stage. Sharmila Koshna. Good morning, everybody. In February 2007, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, then the President of India, stressed the need for development of a standard for the schools to ensure quality of education across the country. Hence, the Quality Council of India developed the accreditation standard for quality school governance. This standard provides framework for the effective management and delivery of the holistic education program which aims at overall development of the students. In 2012, we were the 45th school in India to receive the accreditation from NABIT, which has a tenure of four years. In 2016, we applied for continuance of accreditation. As we adhered to the accreditation standard, and engaged them ourselves in continual improvement, we were re-accredited by NABIT that very year. What are the benefits after accreditation? Benefit for school, a distinctive mark of quality and an inspiration to progress and pursue excellence. Benefit for students and parents, a voice to get redressal of their grievance and a holistic development. Benefit for school management, a regular feedback about the state of affairs through the internal assessments. Benefit for school staff, a new mindset and systematic approach to education delivery. Thank you. Thank you, Shamila ma'am. Calling upon Shuchandra ma'am to once again please come and take the stage to enlighten us on our partnership with Laissez Francais Pondicherry. The Future Foundation School always felt the importance of having the option of pursuing an international curriculum as it recognized the demographic dividend, scarce opportunities, new needs and demands in the job market, an international workplace, 
appalling standards of undergraduate and postgraduate education in India. To give shape to this vision, the Future Foundation School entered into a partnership with Lise Prasi Pondicherry, the oldest French school in Asia, in 2014. It is a genuinely international school with a healthy mix of trained Indian and international faculty. Many of our students have benefited from this collaboration as they have secured the International Baccalaureate Certification and are studying in world-renowned universities today. Thank you. Thank you, Shri Chandra Ma'am. I would now like to invite up on the stage Madame Virginie Cotwal, Consul General of France in Kolkata. I would like to also invite up on the stage Mrs. Sabina Segal, and also Principal Sir Sri Ranjan Mitter. Big round of applause, please. We would like to take this opportunity to felicitate with plants. Our children will be felicitating Miss Sabina Segal, Country Head, Leading Schools Corp, USA. This is Virginie Cotwal, Consul General of France in Kolkata. Madame Tiffany Meron, Deputy Director, Alliance Francais du Bengal. <laughs> Madame Soldi, Co-Receiver, Natasha for Cooperation in French Language. We would also like to felicitate Professor Shorindranan Bhattacharji, Trustee Sri Aurobindo Institute of Culture. Thank you. Thank you so much. We move on to our next section, and in this I would invite Madame Virginie Cotroy to please come and take the microphone and share with us her experience, her ideas, and her vision on La Belle France education and also on death. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As a representative of the French government, I'm very happy to be here this morning because we have a long-standing partnership uh, with Future Foundation School. It has been mentioned before, there is one association with our most prestigious lycée in Pondicherry, which has, you know, a very strong French background. So this is one of the association that we really cherish. The other one, as was mentioned, is the fact that uh, this school, Future Foundation School, has uh, received the accreditation of La Belle France Education, which is a very uh, special accreditation um, that is restricted to very selected schools who uh, provide bilingual teaching. It is the case of um, Future Foundation School, the only school in Calcutta that has received this accreditation. We are extremely happy and supportive of uh, the project that uh, Mr. Mitter has taken even further because um, this year, this very year, uh, Future Foundation School has received another level of accreditation for two more uh, um, levels. So congratulations Mr. Mitter and all your team, all the pedagogical team and all the support team um, in this school because it is quite an achievement. We are extremely uh, proud to share this uh, partnership with your school and um, the level, not only in the bi bilingual uh, sector, but in all sectors, 
um, the level of excellence of this school is uh, recognized as to do today's program shows and we are very proud to be associated with, with your school. I think that on there, there is someone who is far more <laughs> equipped than me to say a few words if you, if you, if you want. Tiffen, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, it has been a while that we are collaborating with the Future Foundation School, which is an excellent school for learning French language. We are collaborating mostly in the framework of the DELF, Diplôme Elementaire de Langue Française. And what is the DELF? It's a French diploma awarded by the French Ministry of Education and Higher Study, which is valid for life and which proof for life the control of the French languages. There is six levels. The first level is A1 level, the one that mostly hears the children pass with the A2 level. The A1 level is a survival level. At this level, the children can already create some connections, they can introduce themselves, they can survive in a French environment. A2 level is a connection level where you are able to make friends, to ask questions, to be in connection. The uh, B1 level is a travel level and that's our target with Future Foundation and it's a good target because in fact with B1 your children will be able to travel without issue all over the French speaking country. With B2, no, it's something very important. With B2, and uh, a view in view of the level at Future Foundation School, I'm sure your children can, can reach this level. With B2, they can go study and work in France, which is something uh, amazing, and which is a great opportunity that can widen their horizons from a personal and professional point of view. With C1, they are very fluent, and with C2, they are speaking maybe better than us. So, yes, we are, we are on this journey with all the child of Future Foundation School. Last year we, uh, we had uh, something like 60 children passing the A1 level and uh, 30 the A2 level, which is a lot. And the, the level was really excellent. So thank you for the collaboration, Monsieur Mitter, and thank you for the excellency of all relationships. Thank you so much for speaking in such detail and enlightening us. I would like now like to invite Mrs. Sabina Segel to please come and take the stage and enlighten us on Leading Schools Corp USA and our inclusion as a member in this organization. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to hear a loud good morning all the way back in Delhi. <laughs> Thank you. It's such an honor and um, a huge honor, I would want to say again, to be standing here on stage amongst you all, amongst the distinguished faculty. I've heard such lovely things from you all just now that leaves me absolutely spellbound. And whatever I've written a little bit, I think it goes through <laughs> out of the window. Um, also, I must mention uh, the way Moshmi and everybody is speaking. Uh, I've always known Bengali being a very, very sweet language. Uh, so much so that the English that they speak also is mellifluous. And um, I'm, I'm actually trying to, um, you know, control the way I'm articulating or speaking because I want to match up with the way they all speak. It's just beautiful the way they all speak. Um, Giving you a little background about um, our organization, our organization is the one of its kind in the world which looks at recognizing and not ranking schools. Um, the organization's uh, you know, primordial purpose is actually to create benchmarks of quality in education so as for the others to ape and say, okay, if, if we want to be a leading school, this is what it takes to be a leading school. And all that Future Foundation stands for and more. In fact, 
um, hearing all this that I have and having seen the school myself, having met uh, Mr. Ranjan Mitter, I think you all are always constantly pushing the envelope. And that is what is more important because in a dynamic world of education, it's very important to keep changing and progressively changing towards the changing landscape and uh, creating new paradigms in education and which is what he's, he's undoubtedly known for doing and um, must compliment the school's faculty because I think um, it's, it's these people who make it, uh, uh, make the children, make the, the children who are our future generation, who are, the, who are the ones who are going to be sustaining and scaling the world today. I want to start with a lot of gratitude um, right now. I don't know the people in the hall here right now, but I have a lot of respect for all the educators, you parents who send out your children for education. Because I think if there's one thing that's most important in today's world is education. And uh, this is what you all are doing. So I have a tremendous respect for the school principals the, the distinguished faculty because, and th this is why I want to start with a lot of gratitude and a thank you because you all are the ones who are the change makers of today. As I was a kid, I used to love circus. Um, you know, I remember Apollo Circus and some circus and just used to say the greatest show on earth, you know. And uh, I used to be very, very fond every time a circus. I don't see many happening now. But then back then, there were lots of uh, circuses happening. And it used to be, as I grew up, I realized that the animals performing for us are not so well treated. And the clown there making us laugh, the happy clown, is not well so happy. As I grew up, I realized, and uh, you know, this is not really the make believe, the show that comes across, it's not really the show that actually is happy or from within doing what uh, they're preaching or what they're showing, it's not really how it is. I, on, on further growing up, I could actually use this analogy with education. And I feel that education is also supposed to be the greatest show on earth because when we admit our children into a school we are actually showing them a world of hope of dreams and of magic and that is what circus was all about when i was a kid it was about hopes it was about dreams it was about magic and this is what we want to do with our children because when we admit a child into a school we actually want him to tell him that here is where you're going to be exploring a world of limitless, limitless possibilities and opportunities. However, when we look at what education is all about across India, this is not so good and as bright as we think it is. It doesn't seem to be the greatest show on earth. Because what we are wanting from our children is a lot of hope, happiness. Whereas when we go to schools outside, I've never been to a lot of schools across India, I see that children are actually being subjected to archaic laws and rules in, in schools and in education, in actually education. In fact, the people who made these laws haven't even consulted the kids who are the ones who are actually using uh, the rules and regulations. In fact, should it not be that we should have a representation of students also when making laws which are meant for them? Why should the children not be part of it? Why should we as adults, how can we as adults see the perspective of children? I think it's very, very important that when we make education laws, rules, regulations, all these policies, the new education policy, we should have a participation, a representation of the students for whom these laws are being made. And therefore, it's very important because, because if it's the children who represent, represent and make laws, they will tell us what they want, what they, how they see the world. What is it in education that they want? When I was back there in uh, school, I used to remember those year BCs and ACs and those dates and those figures, I never could remember a single one. It wasn't important, I felt. 
the use of calculators wasn't even allowed. And I said, why? It's just an aid. It facilitates, which is what our teachers are. They're facilitators today. It's the children who learn by themselves. In fact, the other day my niece messaged me, TTY, and I was like, what does that mean about me? And she laughed out loud. She says, LOL. And she says, Marcy, this means talk to you later. And I felt like a nerd. Because I think the Generation Z knows much better than us. And we have to Google the emojis and the these small acronyms that the children use these days. It's it's so surprising. So coming back to the greatest show on the earth, I feel it's very important for us children, for us adults, to know what our children want. And therefore, this comes from a very powerful tool. I think we all in our lives as adults go through a lot in life. Those little, tiny, big things we do, the challenges that we face in our day-to-day -day lives, that's all a learning, that's education. We all learn and grow from these small little difficulties that we face. And similarly for children, I think they have to take a lot these days. They have to be, they have to master it all. They have to have a complete knowledge on extracurriculars and various other things. It just, just doesn't end there. I think they have to excel in academics, they have to excel in sports, they have to excel in dramatics. They are required to do, a much, to, required to do much more than anybody else learned our times. There's more peer pressure on our children. So therefore, I think it's important for us to perhaps sit down with our children, talk to them, ask them to share their difficulties, their ordeals, what they've overcome. And in so doing, you'll find they feel a lot better, lighter, because when you share, you feel a lot lighter. And when you share with another, you actually enable another child to share. And that is a powerful thing. It spreads like wildfire. And therefore, it empowers us to know the minds of our children. So, as educators, it's very important for us to inculcate our children the various, the preamble of our, the, of our organization, which was, can we have anybody tell us what the preamble of our organization was? Yeah? So it was justice, it was liberty, it was equality, and it was fraternity. Today, if you want our children and we want a better world, and a better world of education, it is these four principles that we should inculcate in them. Which is justice, liberty, equality, and fraternity. And once we have that all in place, our work is done. Until then, we have to go on. Thank you very much. God bless and I love you all. Ma'am, please do not leave the stage. <laughs> we need you here very much. We are honored to have you address us because your speech was so inspiring. In fact, it motivates us to do better and to become more than a leader as far as offering education to the children of India is concerned. And now the moment arrives, the moment for which we have all been waiting. And we would invite Principal Sir Sri Ranjan Mittal to please come and take the stage and invite, yes, ma'am to unveil and hand over the plaque that she has got all the way from Delhi. Yes, and please give a very big round of applause as this take place. Really
you so much, ma'am, for that honor. And as ma'am has just asked me to tell you, that it had been a very, very stringent process by which we had been selected as a member of the leading schools called USA. Now I invite Principal Sir to please deliver the vote of thanks. Bonjour à tous, bonjour Madame Courteval, bonjour Tiffan, bonjour Sofek, bonjour to our trustees, Sri Shorin Bhattacharya and Sri Pratip Kaur, good morning Sabina, and dear parents, because you make the school happen. This recognition today is for our children and for you. This is the first thing and probably the only thing I need to say. When I came to this school almost 20 years ago, 20 years, less a couple of months, I felt like, because I was an outsider, I felt like changing things. And I met parents, it was a smaller school then, not so small, but still smaller than what it is today. And I met them, and I said I wanted to make certain changes. And I was very surprised that I was a complete rank outsider, and they agreed to go along with me. So for the last 20 years, I've felt very grateful to our parent body to have allowed us, as Sabina says, to push the envelope. No year from 1999, and even before actually in my mother's time, has been a photocopy of the year before. Every year we have done something new, something different, and not just We've done different stuff in pedagogy, we've done different stuff in administration, and we've done different stuff in infrastructure. Those here who are, whose children have been in this school for a long time, or those who've had elder children studied here, you will recognize that there is a constant and palpable progress in the school all the time. You see, that progress goes back to the first slide of the presentation. When my colleague Shonath Paul showed you our living deities, they make it happen. They make sure that no tomorrow is the same as today. And I think that's the best thing an educational institution can do if it can really prepare children for the future because nobody has seen the future. But if we can make sure that every tomorrow is different and more than today, we are subconsciously preparing them for something more, something higher, something bigger. This quote of the mother with the picture that was shown, we are here to open the doors of the future to children who belong to the future. The word future has been going around, it's in the name of the school. The future that we intend to bring to our children is not to somehow tolerate today. The world is difficult, but the time is coming, at least according to Sri Aurobindo, and all prophets of India like Swami Vivekananda, a time is coming when the future will be made in a collaboration between the divinity above and humanity below. It's actually happening in front of our eyes but it will be, as time progresses, far more palpable than it is. 114 years ago, in this very city, in a place called Pati Mati, North Calcutta, there was a gathering. In that gathering, there was a lot of noise. You can imagine 114 years ago, Calcutta was a smaller city, a less noisy city and probably even a cleaner city. So 114 years ago at that point in time, this lady of the house heard a lot of noise on the road and she, she saw people with you know torches, torches mean with flames on them, running towards the house. And she thought it was decoits or some people coming to ransack the house. And the son of the house was not there, the man of the house. And she asked the servants, what's happening? They went outside and they heard a loud noise, a scream all over. And the sound they heard was the word Raja, King. So 
a gentleman was coming home from a public rally, which the lady of the house was not aware of. He was speaking after, in the aftermath of the Bengal partition of 1905, Lord Curzon. In that rally, he announced a gift of one lakh of rupees. You can imagine, one lakh of rupees in 1905. How much would it mean? From his personal savings towards what? towards setting up a center for national education. So, and then he announced thereafter, and it was decided by eminent people, including Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore and many others, who would head this unique national college, the first of its kind in the country. It was none other than Aurobindo Akroyd Ghosh, then vice principal of the Baroda College which was where he was working on the tutelage of the Maharaja Sahaji Rao Gaikwad of Baroda. He came down from his 750 rupees per month salary to a paltry 350 which he never got. He came down to settle as principal of the Bengal National College. In those years, ladies and gentlemen, he created or he wrote about a system of national education, which is something we are still struggling with in 2019. Draft after draft is made, as Sabina is talking about, and that draft was made by an educator. That is the difference. An educator who had taught students. Those students rose to become ministers in the government of India, like K.M. Munshi, who wrote about their idol, their professor, in such touching language. In 1950, after Sri was gone physically, 1951 to be precise, the mother convened a memorial convention in his name and said that it is through education and building an education center that Sri Aurobindo could be best remembered. And over the last 70 years, the Sri Aurobindo International Center of Education has been recognized by the government of India the government of India that is known for its red tape and bureaucracy as a center for research, as a role model for education. It's a center that does not give any certificates and diplomas, yet its certificates and diplomas are held in high esteem by leading institutions of India and the world. It is that institution which we draw inspiration from. It is the ideals of the mother and Sri Aurobindo, both educators. The mother too taught physically taught maths, taught French, taught language, taught social sciences, taught science to little children. I have been witness in the ashram to a unique incident. I was at the reception and there the chief of the army staff was waiting. And he had come without an appointment and he sent word repeatedly that he wanted to meet him. And then the word came back, she's busy. He, the poor gentleman, waited for two hours. I was in the reception. And after two hours, he said, I can't wait anymore. I have another appointment. And he left. And the lady and the gentleman who managed the reception, Mr. Chalupada Bhattacharya, later went and asked the mother, what are you busy with? What, what were you busy with? The chief of the army staff was here on an unscheduled visit. And she said, I was teaching maths to a little five-year-old child. And he said, do you think that was more important than meeting the chief of the army? She said, absolutely. Because to that child, at that moment, that was a life and death question. That, gentlemen and ladies, that is education. And that is an educationist. And Sabina was talking about all this. I just felt like recalling that. And today, the recognition that we've got is a recognition we have been getting from all of you. We have, getting, we have been getting from society at large. We have been getting repeatedly from our board, the Council for Indian School Certificate Examinations. I don't know whether you are aware how much the board actually respects our school, our faculty, our students. I use that word deliberately, the word respect. Yes, we are another school. We are, are another affiliated school. But our school, our faculty, as you will in casual inquiry, find out from our teachers that the school is respected. Whenever our teachers go for training programs to the board, they are sought aside, they are spoken to by the chief executive, by the senior officials of the council.
Their advice is heeded. They are consulted on important matters. So therefore, this is something which we are aware of. However, it's nice to know that other people feel so too. So I think the recognition that Navet gave us, the Quality Council for India, of India, the recognition that La Belle France education has brought to us, the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs of the Government of France, the recognition that Ma'am Sabina Segel is conferring on us today, reinforces what we already know. We know we are on track. We are convinced. And we move ahead. A few more things. My colleague Shuchandra Laha mentioned about international education. Yes, absolutely. In the 21st century, the world is truly a village. It's no longer enough to fall back on antiquated syllabi, on stuff that was created 50, 70, 80 years ago, which are incrementally evolving. Yesterday, in the address of Mr. Trump and Mr. Modi in Houston, there was one phrase that was mentioned, radical, not incremental change. If the world is changing radically, India is also has to change radically, that radicalism will imply in education an exposure to the world. An exposure that will be enabling for India, for children who want to live in India, but an exposure that will also embrace the best the world has to offer. La Belle France is a unique program. I say this in front of Madame Corteval and uh, Solveig and Tiffan. It's a unique program that allows us to be within the contours of national education and yet get an accreditation that is international in scope and dimension. That, I think, is the single biggest thing that La Belle gives us. There are children who and their parents who make a conscious choice of going for an international certification. And for that, our partnership with the Lycée is doing wonders. Our children have gone there, are going there, and thereby after that to France for higher education. As you know, France is one of the most popular quality destinations for higher education in France. In this place itself, one trustee sitting on the front row and I have had the benefit of that higher education and we still stand apart from the crowd by virtue of that. And our students today are doing that. They come here, some of you know them, they do workshops with our children, they come back on their home visit every year and the tradition continues and we send children to the DC. However, for children, who want to remain in the contours of national education, who don't want to step outside their home, they too need to be international. And in that respect, the extension of La Belle France from class four to class six is great, and we hope in a year and a half, it will extend itself to class eight. So in that anticipation, and I know, like always over the last two decades, I can count on your a lot is happening in education, as I mentioned a little while ago. There's a new education policy in the making. However, I can only tell you that the Future Foundation School is excellently prepared. Whatever the changes that come, we are on the right track. Once again, I thank all of you, and particularly our parents, and of course our huge student body. I've just been connecting to an alumni. And I just got a message this morning from a lady who's now a professor in UPenn, the University of Pennsylvania. And she said the following, she passed out many years ago, in fact, before I became the principal. She said that the values that this institution endowed her with hold her in good stead in her life in the United States of America today and as a faculty, as a senior faculty member at the University of Pennsylvania. And she tries to impart the same to her students. So it is with that spirit, with that knowledge, with that understanding, and the conviction that indeed this school is one of the best, not only in India, but one of the best in the world, that I, in the name of all of you, 
and all our students and alumni and parents. I thank Sabina for conferring this award to us. Thank you. I would be failing in my duty if I didn't thank my colleagues enough. They have been on stage today. You've heard them speak. You've seen them receiving awards and honors, but much more than that, they are the people who make the day-to-day -day life of the institution. There are also Pompa, Poloma, and others I can see behind Juma, Chunki. Thank you very much. They have been through thick and thin with us and continue. They don't come for a job, unlike any other school. No teacher here, I dare say, comes here to do a job. They come because they feel it's a labor of love. And this is a school that works from 8.20 in the morning to 7.30 in the evening. You know that very well. It's a six and a half day for most of our teachers. There is a whole fleet of children right now in Oroville and Satya Prakash Mishra is with them. So day in, day out, people give up what is called work-life balance to make this school happen. I would also like to thank all the people who are called non-teaching staff. Without their love, without their care, our children will not be able to move the mountains they do. Thank you once again for making this day.